One of the things I love about playing Soraya the most is backing my guys. The guys that I think are better than everyone else out there that not everyone else agrees with. And then actually playing the game, that gets surrounded by the strategy of trying to get cards that are better, in my opinion, than what the rest of the market believes they are so they can make my teams better. Maybe I can trade them in the market. Maybe they can help me win stuff on the leaderboard, depending on the person that we're talking about. And the card that I've brought into my club, guys, this week, honestly, I cannot... Oh, if you're kind of new to the channel, you might not get exactly how much this means to me, but this is definitely like in my top three wow moments of cards that I've, I've actually seen it arrive in my gallery, seen the transfer in progress icon come up and just being like, oh, I got it. No way, no way, no way. And yeah, without any further ado, guys, it is the one, the only big LG Leon Goretzka. Now, there's a wee story that goes into this, and I'll explain it in case you are a bit newer here. And if you're a, if you've been on the channel, you maybe know a lot of the background already. Get comfy, because this is a, going to be a good, fun trip down memory lane. I'm going to go through my super rare transactions on Soria Data, and it tells a very interesting story. And it really, honestly, guys, like Goreska, I think is a great player. You can go and have a look at how Bayern are doing the now with him, without him in the team, and. I see the now it's really funny. I'm so happy to get this card in, and straight away I want to put it in the lineups. But Bayern fans are really hating on him right now. <laughs> <laughs> but we got an in-season one, we got a 3D one, which just makes it extra sweet and delicious for me, to be honest with you. Like, an old season one would give me the nostalgia on the card, like getting it in, don't get me wrong, but I'm really happy to have the brand new one. That's uh, it just, it really does feel like a cherry on top of the cake, having the in-season bonus for the full season. I think I'll be able to take good effect of that. Before we get down to memory lane, I'll explain a little bit of context, okay? So... Like I mentioned in the intro, I'm always after bringing in cards into my gallery that I like. I really like watching them. I think they're great football players. They're players that I believe in a lot. I believe they could always do better or I believe they're achieving great things and maybe not quite getting all the accolades that they deserve. That's a big part of the guys that I like to bring into my club especially. And when I started playing so rare, there wasn't the teams, the players available anywhere near to the level that there is today. So I always had this kind of list where it was, if everyone was available, who would that actually try and buy? And this list became almost, um, it wasn't almost, it wasn't always like a physical list. I just know inherently the guys that I'm attracted to in this sense for this game. And it was always a case of when the licenses come on, I know the guys I'm after. I know all, all the attention is going to be on, in the Goretzka case here, we'll be talking about Kimmich, Lewandowski, uh, De Ligt, Neuer. You know, there was a, you know, the Bayern Munich team is stacked and I thought, hey, Goretzka's a guy, he's probably my favourite player in the Bayern team next to Sané. I'm a huge fan of him in general, blah, blah, blah. And getting his super rare was an objective that I set myself really early in my so rare journey just because I thought he was some, somebody that would be really undervalued in the market. And right now, you know, he is what he is and all the rest of it. But if you look at the trajectory that his price has been on over the last three years, it really does tell a tale here. When the cards first came out, they were relatively within reach of me for the first, like, little while. As you can see here, the first, like, five or six there all kind of went around with the exception of one of them going mega priced, but they all kind of went around just under the two ETH mark, and that was kind of halfway reasonable for me at that point for a super rare. And as you can see, the spike really went up as high as nine Ethereum. Now, that may not sound like too much, okay? But see, when I flip this switch and put it into Power Notes, you'll see this card went crazy expensive, and it was a big regret of mine that I didn't have it to sell into the market at this point, I suppose. And the, sh the, the horse is kind of bolted in that respect. I don't ever see these prices returning for super rares, but you know, you, you never know, I suppose, but it's not part of the makeup of getting this card in. But it's just for how far unattainable this thing became is that it was selling for in excess of 20,000 quid. <laughs> the scores themselves is the sort of scores that I expect is going to be the sort of guy that I will be able to pick up. I want guys that can smash 100s, I want guys that are 75, 85 capable, but I do expect that they're going to be carrying some of these yellows once in a while, and that's why they'll be coming into my price range at different points, especially over the last like, six months. This hasn't been the best Goretzka that we've seen by any stretch, and that's why his price is adjusted, and I can totally see that. But the guys are clearly a fantastic player, and like I say, somebody that I've been long trying to bring into my club. I think this guy's a, a fantastic profile of a guy that can play in a lot of different divisions for a gallery like mine. And let's see, I'm just absolutely made up that I've managed to bring him in. Now, I did promise you a wee bit of memory lane and why, a wee bit of extra context as to why this is so special. Of course, being able to maybe pick it up really cheap and selling it for a bucket, of, a real big bucket of money would have been super fantastic. Maybe, you know, like I say, 
You never write these things off, but it's not in the plan at all. But when I completed this move, this then took me to going all the way back to the beginning and having a wee look at my transactions in this super rare journey. Because for me, like I started to, I started playing super rare with like, you know, the same budget that a lot of other people will start with. And it's just like pocket money at the end of the week when you get, I, I was on weekly pay for a lot of the time, you know, so, uh, and, and you know, that kind of thing. So I kind of built my club up slowly but surely, but it's the super rare and above division is my aspirational level. That's the game, that's the level of the game that I want to get to, where I really want to feel that I can knock out good rewards and, you know, all the good stuff that comes along with that at that level. And I feel that's the real aspiration part of the game for me. But over this time, of course, we're always having influxes of new users, new licenses as well, which means that there's more players available, guys that were not available at the beginning when I started this game, for example. So different things do play a part in everything that does happen. But like I say, for me, I thought this was a great, when I was scrolling through this and having a wee chuckle to myself about some of the guys I brought in, how they panned out, some of the deals I've done, some of the blunders I made as well. I thought there's some fantastic lessons out here that for anyone on a, on their story or journey, whether they're just starting out or they're a year into it or whatever, you know, there'll be something here, maybe a, a lesson or a giggle or something. So as most of you guys will know already, or a lot of you will know, maybe not most, but the very first super rare I picked up was a Kieran Trippier. Now, just under a quarter of an Ethereum at that point in time was like 20 quid. Like Ethereum was like 80 pound when I started playing, um, which is a big part of the reason I managed to get a lot of Ethereum in that first year. And you'll see a lot of the transactions we do here are high Ethereum volume, like 0 0.65, but maybe Ethereum at this point was like 200 quid or something. I'm not too sure. But very early on, there wasn't a lot of availability. And in terms of this list of players that I would buy no matter who was available, Kieran Trippier was definitely one of the top five defenders I would have wanted to play in this game. So getting him right off the bat, I was nowhere anywhere near able to use him for so long. I only had rares playing with commons as well. It was a different experience. I won't go into that, but I never really got to use him to his fullest potential for so long because I was on a real thin budget. But getting that stretch card, that one that I thought, wow, I just managed to get it on a really good situation. It was very underpriced. It was like a 3 a.m. auction that I woke up for. Uh, which was good fun as well. I went and got a goalkeeper, and this one was kind of funny as well, but see this Ruffier, as soon as I bought him, for, again, like the same price as Trippier, so at that time, a reasonable amount of money in, in the market, like two weeks later, he was announced as director of football in a Division 3 club or something, so that was funny. I then won a Latif Blessing, which was cool, in Division 2 with like some rare cards, uh, which is just different game, different times, I suppose, and managed to trade that into Jesus Medina. Now, when I had Medina and I had Trippier, I was able to kind of put them together and have a bit of fun and this Medina card was really frustrating and it did bear a lot of fruits he's now in Russia and had I kept a hold of him he'd have probably done even better for me he's still really handy in Russia since he's went there if we just do all time oh it's Spartak and Moss he's played for two of them yes he's been handy enough but he helped me win some fun cards Yari Vasharin Isa Kabore Ezekiel Barco and then just a bunch of our guys that became like market fodder eventually but he was good fun NYCFC player as well and Again, having that so early on in my Soria journey, I do think that was something that I really enjoyed and wanted to try and maintain at every opportunity. And I've tried to keep it with players that I've brought in that, again, I liked, I had a bit of a hunch about that I thought could do well. And it's a bit of a numbers game as well, particularly with what I, again, generally do tend to bulk up on as midfielders, prospect midfielders, you know. So um, it looks like in this little uh, spree here, there's been a little bit of everything across the positions. I went and picked up Titan because I thought he would play in America. That didn't really work. Guys like Cliver, Alvarez, Cuisance, Matarita, who I won, he didn't really pay off in any way. Um, he used to pay out uh, super rares back in the day for a long time. It's became kind of recent and then uh, the Paulinho and the Hakimi I'll come on to talk about in a second but this little uh, spree here which you can see all kind of happened in October November time was me trying to just kind of maximize on some depreciated pieces in the market and trying to take a punt on any of them ideally all of them paying off within a season and Nadima Miri was a big case for me out of that bunch for the eye test out of that bunch he was the only one that I was actually watching playing football and I just knew that he was going to be, he was playing good. I think I picked him up at the time when it was like, I think it was so back in this period here anyway, but I think, yeah, he'd maybe picked up a 60 or a 70 and I'd watched the games and he was electric. He was playing fantastically well with Wurtz and I can't remember who else was in the team at the time. Guys like Schick and Leon Bailey and whatever, Diaby. And uh, I picked him up and I managed to get some of these better scores out of him and he helped me win some really big cards. 
Whereas Alvarez and Cuisance, they were more guys I was going off of things like statistics and hype and prospect and all that kind of stuff. And Cuisance was a big fat failure. Alvarez came okay in different spells. But again, that was a, something really important to me dead early on with trying to unearth undervalued players is the eye test just means so much more to actually random opinion or whatever. I do feel really unlucky with the Paulinho because I did pay a decent fee for him and as an under-23 Brazilian forward, I thought he could have came very, very good. He's obviously popping now, but really, see if you zoom out, it's only really since now it's happened. I would have to have held him for like three years solid for this uh, form to come. And I don't know if it's really worth waiting for three years. So he was a wee bit of a pain in the backside with injuries and whatever. Didn't win me any rewards. And when you're in the so rare market and you're moving up a scarcity, whether it be from common to limited or limited to rare, whatever it might be, you're always going to be looking for undervalued guys first and foremost. I just find this super rare example a bit more interesting and a bit more fun because there's less uh, transactions and you can kind of see a wee bit of an evolution on building a club up. Because if you look at my current standing at the moment, just to kind of slide this in at the middle, I've got some competitive teams, and this is like a nice kind of wee layout of how it kind of became, as it were. But there's always been that kind of push for getting those guys that the market is just absolutely sleeping on. And for me, Ashraf Hakimi, Leon Goretzka, and then a few other guys that you're going to see on this page and we'll come to shortly, were just, for me, way underappreciated in the market, way undervalued, and I was so happy. When I got Hakimi in, it was one of those first moments on this game. Um, maybe uh, uh, the Trippier one was a bit different because the game was nowhere near as advanced or evolved, but when I got the Hakimi in, it was a real, like, jackpot feeling moment for me where I thought yes I've got like a real like he would be number two number one defender for me at that time he's a bit volatile whatever I don't mind I don't care I just think he's fantastic I think he's only going to play for world-class teams he's only going to keep up this kind of scoring potential I loved having him in I couldn't believe the price I brought him in for and he was really prolific for me for as well, for the short time I had him certainly anyway uh, it brought me in some really good cards Rafinha, Teze, Grimaldo uh, Caceres, Tobias Anselm, who I sold for quite a quite a, a couple of quid in Sulaimana before, obviously, I went and sold on the Hakimi later on. You'll probably see that in the transactions anyway. But when I got that, it felt like, yes, I now have a piece. I've now got a card that makes a lot of these other questionable ones a bit more worthwhile. I've got a talisman. I've got a guy that's captain capable, a guy that's genuinely, I would consider, world-class quality in his position in a super rare Yeehaw, couldn't wait to go. And that was when he was at Inter Milan winning the Serie A and doing all that good stuff as well. So that was fantastic. I then pushed the boat out, got a starting goalkeeper, got Barco, who I thought, uh, you know, I got Barco and Akinola on a bit of a budget from a guy that was selling up. Barco I'd seen play a little bit more at this point, and Akinola was another one of these guys that was just highly rated. So again, I'm trying to kind of hedge my bets on numbers with those two guys and Paulinho, and I'm trying to get an under 23 wonder kid type guy to emerge. But I don't mind spending more money on guys that I've seen and I believe are more proven. I pushed the boat out for Lucas Nemeca and I've still got him. He's up at level 20 now. He's been an absolute hero for me. But he's been injured for fucking ages. Look at this. 294, 168 is his reward history. And then before the 160s, it's 148, 138. So no, nothing for a long time. Really nice cards when they have came in. And I've seen him play a bunch of times, obviously. I think I've watched every game he's bloody played at this point. And, uh... You know, back at that, these days when he's playing for Anderlecht, he was just smashing, smashing, smashing. And again, pushing the boat out for proven quality. Once I had piece number one in, felt a lot more worthwhile. And I was going to be able to reap the benefits of having some of these guys in. Hakimi and the Mecca were under 23 at the time as well. As was Barco, Akinola, getting a lot of under 23 high value prospects. I've kind of skipped by Diego Costa here, but Diego Costa was like, you might remember, he'd kind of just won the, I can't remember if he won the league at Athletic, but he was at Athletic and he was bombed out. He was seen pictured in hotels smoking cigars and all the rest of it. And uh, I got him for like 50 quid. It was just a bit of a flip, to be honest with you. I don't think I ever played him in tournaments. No, he's only won two cards um, this edition of him. So. That was just a wee kind of funny trade, as you can see. They're just a wee opportunity one. And I know the Ethereum amount might look a bit more, but it, was, it wasn't it was much. It might have been 100 quid. I can't remember, but it wasn't very much at that time. Darwin Nunes was another one. And guys, this is, you'll see when I sold this, I absolutely dropped the ball on it in a huge way. But Darwin Nunes was a guy that was firmly on my top five striker list. A guy, if I could get him in as a super rare, would be an absolute jackpot. And we did for, like, and the thing with him is, I'd went for every auction and I was always just getting outbidded 
by a bunch of whales that I knew as soon as they entered the fray, I was never going to be able to outbid them and I had to let them go. And I did get him in. He won me some decent stuff. I definitely dropped the ball on when I could have sold him. You don't win them all. Managed to bring in a Renato Sanchez. For better or for worse, we sell it for an Alvarez. And then we're able to go and bring in a super rare that, again, was on that top five list, under 23 at the time, Jordan Larson. Big striker, big firepower. Because winning divisions, you do need guys that are decisive capable. I've still got this guy first owner on him. He's been very prolific when he does play. But as you can see with the game weeks, he has hit for me. Very few and far between in recent times. And strikers that are capable, you need to bring them in when you're when you're presented with the opportunity. This is Darwin Nunes' charts as well. You need guys that can really deliver and smash into the 70s and the 80s. And the lessons I'd learned with some of these other guys previously, it kind of taught me that I'm just going to keep my money. You know, when I was selling into Pavel and getting the, the funds up and I had obviously rares transacting, I filtered this off for only super rares and uniques. I'm picking my battles, I'm waiting for the precise auction to come up and I'm going to do my best. And then guys, I did one of the worst things I've done. I went and got Ki Sung Young, 1 of 10, for 1.6 Ethereum. Now at this point in time, this thing cost me like 3 grand is what it was in Ethereum. And he was not that prolific for me, it must be said. He was good enough, you know what I mean? He was good enough, but he wasn't didn't do the business. Because at the time, he had just come back to the K-League from uh, the Premier League. And his first three scores were like, yeah... This is it here. And that was his L5 was up here. It was like 55, 84, 94, 79, 89. And I was like, give me a bit of that. I've seen the scores of Cecenia and other guys in the K-League and the J-League. And I thought, sign me up for this. And it's just never really been, has it? He's been great. He's been fine, hasn't he? He's been a really solid green scorer. But he just never brought those 80s and 90s very often. Recently got his first 100, which I was really happy to see for anyone that's got him. But that was a severe overpay. And really did kind of tie my hands behind my back. I got Osaka really cheap. I got Koki Machida, who I was a big fan of. And that really didn't deliver for me. Spent a lot on goals again with Joseph. And the Joseph card, I think, did deliver for me. And I think when you're moving up scarcity, when I'm reviewing galleries especially, one of the things that I do see so often is that not a lot of people have goals in their team. And it's something that I'm always desperate to make sure I've got somebody that I would be happy to back as like an anytime goal scorer, a guy that can get 20 goals a season, a guy that can get 15 goals, 12 goals, something of note, a guy that can score, I need to get him in my team, he was okay for me, he was pretty good, um, I was kind of taking the hunch on him coming back from injury, he would be as good as he used to be, it didn't really totally pan out, uh, maybe a slight overpay, and again at this point, I think I kind of smell a wee bit of an opportunity, and I went into the market, and uh, where does it stop really, I, I just went ham, for what I felt to be undervalued MLS super rares. I just went and got hundreds, well not hundreds, you can see them all here. Uh, and these guys had all been kind of eye tested. I kind of knew what I was getting into with a lot of them. I'd watched uh, a lot of early season LA Galaxy, NYC, uh, and I'd just seen a few of the other individuals that I was picking up here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but a lot of them played for me. Not all of them really hit. And, you know, I don't think I overpaid on any of them, so it was kind of safe in that respect. And I think when you do see these regions go undervalued, getting a cohort of guys like that on a budget and making sure you have eye-tested them, you know what they're going to do, and your expectations are reasonable, and then you get an entry point to match, you can have some good SO5 fun with them, especially with guys like Hassel, under-23 goalkeepers, and, you know, there's other guys here I won't bore you with, but you can see the quality and it's really a numbers game. I'm trying to build a squad out here. I then get my first Celtic super rare in, in Jack and Marcus, and I was really buzzing about this because Celtic weren't that amazing at the time. We'd just lost out on 10 in a row, and the sentiment around Celtic wasn't that great when Ange came in. Um, but Jack and Marcus, I thought, hey, he had a card, he'd scored well the season before, and I kind of made sure, I overpaid on him, but I just wanted to make sure I went and got him. It wasn't really that good for me. It must be said he was a bit of a pain in the backside. It's been really good since he's went to MLS. But that was my first experience of getting some hoops, getting some green and white super rare action uh, on the go. And then I won a Gil Smile, and that's one of these rewards that I think I sold him for, yeah, bugger all very quickly. He's been worth a lot of money. But that money, not too long afterwards, yeah, I think I must have funded Taylor Harwood Bellis, who was another top five defender pick for me. An up-and-coming City Football Group, England international youth captain player that I had a lot of faith in, a high belief in, and uh, he was fantastic for me, especially when he was at um, was it Stoke or something. I forget who it was exactly. England under-21s. Burnley was very good as well. I think I sold him when he went to Burnley and he started popping. 
uh, early season before he got an injury. Yeah, did well at Stoke, went to Burnley, and that's when he started to peaky peaky off. And I think I must have sold him around this kind of period here or so. Get that one off, get him in early. I think I had to overpay for him because he was at Anderlecht and he was getting, he was not getting minutes. And you know, I was a bit of a belief one. And I seen this was on the history, and I was actually really happy, but managed to throw away a bunch of you know Jao Felixes and Kaylor Navases at the time, and I had so much. I really wish I kept a hold of this card. I had so much belief in Cam. I think I still do, but I really wanted to keep this forever. I really did want to keep this forever. Alas, I never. But it's good to see that I got it for bits and bobs, and I maybe I think I got a few quid for him in the end. We would then pick up Braze Mendez again, again another guy I just seen in the market as being like way undervalued, a potential another Goretzka situation, just one of those really busy midfielders. Didn't quite have the profile of playing for a Bayern Munich or whatever. And Braze, it's just been a love story ever since. Uh, Dries Mertens, Rio Hitate, Pablo Maffeo, Sandro Tonali. High value guys. And like you can see here, Sandro Tonali comes in for just under an ETH. I sell Hakimi there. It's probably one of my first big super rare sales. It is, in fact, for just under four ETH. Which at the time, that was like 12 grand or something. That was a real big wad of money. And at this time, guys, I've got a lot of belief in the super rare market. I've got a lot of belief in my talent ID when I sell that Hakimi. And when I see the way that the markets went for other guys that I've missed out on auctions. And I can see the guys that I do have in the club and how they have done to this point as well. So picking up a guy like Tenali did give me a lot of confidence that, hey, I know this guy's going to come good again. And I can pick him up at a real low. I don't think I actually held him for that long. I don't think he was exceptionally prolific so5 wise to be quite honest now the mertens we'd managed to bring in for some bits and bobs here which i thought was actually a really good trade because we managed to sell him quite quickly for some money and i've not, maybe not done that kind of thing often enough i suppose joanne jordan love him would love to bring him back here and then i brought in my first unique dennis suarez because again this is an our guy that just fell into one of those categories where i felt way undervalued in the market and at this point i'm now thinking i want to be a d2 player i need to get European goalkeeper, super rare, those things were way overvalued. I had Darwin Nunes, who his injury history really didn't give me much confidence. It was before the Liverpool links really materialised. And I did this trade and like it wasn't great for me. I didn't even keep the Maxi Gomez long enough to really enjoy it when I went to the Mestalla. And it's probably the worst one of the worst trades I've actually done, to be honest. And I really then put myself back. I really feel that a lot of good work I'd done by scouting Nunes and playing him and sticking by him. I just threw it down the tubes and I was really annoyed at myself. I then got Alcacer, I then got Unal and I was really annoyed. I was, I, I can remember how frustrated I was in the market and I just had to make sure I replaced them with solid goals and Unal ended up coming good. Alcacer and Maxi Gomez didn't stick around to do the job. And then in that kind of same, oh, I've fucked it up, went and just, I'm going to go get Kostic super rare. Don't care. Went and got him out on auction. Bit of an overpay. Because this is a guy that was on sets. Really strong team. Really strong makeup and profile. And I paid a really strong price for him. And I don't think I made that back on him when I sold him. He won me fuck all. <laughs> this is funny. Because I know this Ferran Torres is going to come back on in a minute. But he traded me another Ferran Torres at the time. And I was just really annoyed with Kostic. I think I took it. Because Kostic wasn't very liquid at that moment in time as well. So there's a lesson in that. Uh, we win some super rares. Yangel Herrera is one. And again, at this point, I think I'm just so hell-bent on this getting into D2 situation and all the rest of it. Once I've picked up Kostic, I then go in and pay an E for Cunha. Now, that was a really bad move at that time because that was on a hunch that he was going to be coming into the team on other availability of players, injury statuses, etc. It kind of did come back into the team, but it didn't really happen for him. And it still hasn't really happened for him. I've still got him, of course. Still waiting for that to come off. And this was a real lesson here. I swapped Gomez, who was worth two ETH, for Soria, who was worth one and a half ETH. Straight swap. Didn't care about the price difference because I just wanted Soria. He was one of those guys that was, if everyone was available, who would the goalkeeper get be? I would want. And I got the Gomez in that trade. And like I say, I felt so bad that I'd let go of that Nunes. I think maybe at this time, Liverpool links and that stuff were happening. And I was just like, fuck it. I want Soria. I just want to make sure I get him in. And this was right before, I think like a week later, Alfred Gomez like, broke his finger or did something crazy and got dropped from Wren. Um, he actually had a really good season last year, but we won't go into that. We win some more rewards. We sell Slovak. And at this point, guys, I've got huge regret because look at the amount of money I've spent on Super Rares over the last like period here. Eve on Cunha, 1.3 on Kostic. Even that little bit there on uh, Boyata, making that Unal trade happen. These pieces here, messing up the Nunes, spending money on the Suarez, spending money on the Jordan. And then at this point, you know this happens here. 
this has been Celtic getting licensed and I'm just like I've spent like so much ETH and I've fucked up so much ETH and now Celtic are on the on the platform and I should really be picking up all of these guys and I should have got a lot more of them than what I did and I'm so thankful I managed to pull that trade off to get that McGregor in I'm so thankful Taylor was in that undervalued category where I managed to pick him up nice and cheap and then from there like you can see I'm just kind of like Ortega was linked to Celtic trying to get him in and then there's just been a wee bit of card swapping I can finally force some ETH after doing some trading and stuff like that so Tenali to Nellis uh, I sold Renato Sanchez for 0.8 I managed to go and get Hitate, Dyson Maeda uh, I then managed to sell Kostic for a Ferran Torres and a wee bit of ETH and then to Super Usmani here I'm bulk selling tons of stuff look at all of these guys that I'd picked up at really low levels and I think overall I managed to sell them for probably decent rates at the time none of them are stellar but there was a second Ferran Torres so I didn't need to get rid of the one I liked which was cool and it was way more liquid than the Kostic Camavinga goes my Depay goes Mendes, nobody else really of significance, we bring in a lot of ETH, we swap Dyson Maedas around to get him in the hoops, I bring in Hidara, who's another guy I'm a huge fan of and he's just never really worked out, no longer have him, Lorente, and I'm on this hell-bent mission of just trying to get everyone who I really like, I get Furuhashi in, cost me a fucking arm and a leg, so did the Dyson Maeda, as you can see here, 1.6, I traded Timo Werner for a Charlie Mulgrew unique, so I've got a wee bit more unique coverage, maybe we can use that, uh, we trade some cards here for a Viviano, who was kind of useful, and again, we're just trying to get some more squad players in, I'm buying some guys, I'm winning the odd one here and there as well, we're doing some trades on the market for some other cards and whatever, and then I won, I won a Kyogo Furuhashi Super Rare in the hoops, which was absolutely fantastic, and it meant I could sell the one I had, they helped me win them. Uh, in the Vissel Kobe shirt and this was a real huge moment for me and this guy's an absolute FC Barcelona legend look at all the cards he's helped me win and you're going to see me selling all these cards very shortly and you know that was a huge relief moment for me that I'd built a Celtic team that could win Celtic cards because as you can see it's been very tumultuous and I've not been buying stellar guys I've not been buying guys that are very expensive top of the food chain I'm buying a lot of hit and hope guys um, so we get the Furuhashi in and I managed to sell him in a really nice deal to a friend of the channel, Gaza, who had bought Braze and then Braze went to Sociedad and immediately wasn't that good. And again, I believe in Braze, so I'm like, hey, you've got my Braze, Gaza? That was the conversation I had. Then I'll value that on the market, even though he's nobody was buying him. He was totally illiquid. Um, and anyway, he gets Furuhashi. I get Braze back, give a pal a bit of a discount. And, you know, the rest is history. I've got Braze in. And I you know, basically won a Furuhashi, which was a great victory for that Celtic team. We go and get Jack Hendry. We bring in Tony Watt. Now, I, sold, I sell Trippier. And for me, this was one of those moments where it was a money over passion thing. I kind of needed the money, I think. As you can see, I'd been made some bad moves earlier on with Super Rares. And his price was... It was really hard to sell him for a little while. Like he didn't get that many transactions. He was very expensive. And because he wasn't U23, the market wasn't mad for him. Looking at this, I didn't sell him that bad, I suppose. And I could probably bring him back in, actually. I might look at doing that, because I really do want... I'd love if I could get my trip here back. That would make me very happy. But, uh, you know, I could have sold one for maybe a wee bit more at some point, perhaps. I don't think, you know, the Newcastle one goes for the Newcastle price, but I think I could have sold mine for maybe closer to one and a half, two, perhaps. But I was really sorry to see the guy go. It was a real big part of my success. And, you know, like, it made me some, you know, it made me pop quite early on. I say, it wasn't that prolific for that long. It was, uh, anyway, it was very frustrating overall. But that, he goes, and it's one of those ones where it's like, right, got to kind of get to grips with it in terms of, you know, sell guys when they're worth money. Again, when you get an offer worth 1.2, don't think that it could be worth 2. Take the 1.2 and just move on. I get the Jan Kuto, and he's starting to come good kind of now. So I've had to really wait on him. Gordon, uh, Snoddy. We sell Harwood Bellis for a fuck ton of money. I think that was like five or six grand to Bobby Perez when his bright Burnley form really picked up. Uh, we won some guys. We sell some more guys. Barco goes out. Edeguchi gets sold. We win some more guys. We're doing a wee bit of trading for goalkeepers. We bring in a scales. Wow, look what I got scales for. Jens, Benkovic, Galan, and a crumb of ETH. That's brilliant. I'm so happy with that. 
uh, Gordon. We bring in McGinn. So the Premier League has came out at this point. And again, I want McGinn. I want Tierney. I want Edward. I want Ayer. I want Armstrong. There's guys I'm after straight away. But I know they're not all too optimal. McGinn is somewhat because I know he's a box-to-box midfielder. And some of these rewards that we picked up back here... They weren't panning out too good and we managed to do that. We brought in another unique as well, which ends up being useful later on. But we have a bit of interest in Denis Suarez when his transfer is confirmed to Villarreal. And we trade him for a bunch of rares that were able to immediately, with another rare I've got in the club, uh, Paolo Lobe Obina, who I'd been holding for a long time, roll them together and bring in an Odson Edwards. So that is a trade situation. It was good for me. I really enjoyed doing that. We've still got Edward in the club, obviously. And because I get the Edward and because I get the McGinn and because of where the Celtic cards are and just generally where the gallery's at, again, I'm feeling more pressure on stability and goalkeepers because so many goalkeepers have let me down and been a problem. And, you know, Pavel has got a Skorupski and I've managed to, I had to throw a lot at him, but I think overall, like this trade is, I'm really happy to do it at the time and I still am. Uh, I also seen at the time he had a Gabri Vega and I just had to make sure I get it. He got it, you know, at that time, I don't know what the value was, but look at all those pieces. I was really happy to throw that away and make that happen. And at this point, I'm very ETH poor. I think I'm withdrawing a lot of money and I'm having to do lots of trading. We get Tierney in when he's on the bench for Arsenal. We win a Carlo Hosa, which is good fun. And then we start to, what well, we do, we trade here for Svietchenko. We sell Hosa. We bring in Iglesias. We win some rewards. Some more trading. A couple of crummy sales. We win a Nonto, which is a big piece there. And again, we're trying to win some rewards by another guy, Raquel May, really undervalued in the market, in my opinion. Not too long ago, I did bring in the Ayer on a trade situation, which was fine. Idara was sold for a loss. We bring in Roca on a trade situation. And then, oh, I think that's a bit of an overpay on Damon. But again, like I'm talking about, I'm just really after that stability on nailed on goalkeepers because the amount of time and investment we're now in it three months ago very quickly over the last little while it's been a really long hard graft waiting for opportunities for the right guys to become available at the right clubs when they're going to play a de-risk on Marshall a sell <laughs> Mulgrew for pennies because he's retired now we sell Nonto I've traded a uh, Hitate for Roy Razabal just for a wee bit of that champ Euro coverage and a wee bit of de-risking away from the whole Celtic situation as well. Now he signed a contract. Uh, you know, maybe it's a bit more of an even trade, I suppose, less of winner winner and loser situation. And then also we're up to kind of present day where we're at, bringing in the big Goretzka. It's taken three years to get him in. Is kind of the full circle moral of the story on this one, guys. And I'm absolutely buzzing. He's going to be going into a lineup this weekend. I think Bayern are listing him as being a defender. But now, guys, when I look at my club, I've got 35 super rares and three uniques. And for me, like, for an aspirational player who started with like just depositing every week and hustling and bumping and moving, obviously I've done this over a three-year period and there's been so many other caveats that go alongside that. But as you can see, individually, buying super rares, buying guys that are a wee bit above me when I see an opportunity in the market, everyone's capable of doing that at any scarcity level, whether it be limited or rares, and helping you gradually progress and move up like is what this game is about for me and like my super rares and all this stuff i take it i'm so I'm proud of what i've got here i think it's a club where if anyone looks at it i puff my chest out i'm like yeah that's my that's my club that's my collection that's the rig out i've been building this whole time yeah the rares come into it a little bit i've got a really cool collection for some clubs and some nice players some nice rookies or whatever i don't know but for me these are the cards that are like i've picked these guys they bang, they win me stuff, they set me apart from everyone else on the leaderboard and I really shouldn't have these guys is the point I'm making here with the amount of, uh, you know, it's about trading, it's about winning cards, playing the game, buying guys when they're underappreciated and waiting for them to come good and that's what is symbolised here I feel, you know, so it's a, it's a great time, it is a great time for SC Barcelona and guys. I don't know how long the final cut of this video is be, is, will be, I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you've maybe taken something from it. On screen there are some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Um, have a good one, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.